Hey, what is going on, guys? DK. Back at you with another video here to break down the six game NBA main slate on Wednesday. If this is your first time watching, welcome. My name is DK. I make content daily for uh, Daily Fantasy Sports, uh, for uh, prize picks, for NBA Top Chat, for NFL All Day. Um, I do want to say that I will be starting a stream uh, tomorrow, uh, going to be going at 1 p.m. Uh, Central, where I kind of cover everything. So, you know, we'll cover some NBA Top Chat, we'll cover some NFL All Day some DraftKings as well as prize picks and I'm doing probably an hour long stream. So if that's something that interests you guys, make sure to check that out tomorrow. Um, if you're unable to watch these videos, I do upload on Apple Podcasts. Link is down below and premium content guys I offer that on patreon.com for daily fantasy sports. So if you want more in-depth content, check out my Patreon down below. The sponsor of this video, guys, is Prize Picks. Again, if, you, if this is your first time watching and you're not familiar with Prize Picks, it's a player prop site. They have basically every single sport you can think of. And there's a lot of different ways you can play for NBA. You can take over under and points, assists, rebounds, three pointers made. You can take over under and fancy points, points plus rebounds, plus assists. You can mix and match sports. They have first half contests, they have second half contests, uh, sometimes a fourth quarter contest. So um, you pick two to five player pops and or two up to five player pops, and you win up to 10 extra money. And again, like I said, you can mix and match. If you want to take a couple from the Super Bowl, pair them with a couple from <laughs> a couple from NBA, you can definitely do that. So if you guys want to give it a try, you can sign up and use my code DKDFS for 100% match up to $100. So basically, that is a free $100 to play with on the site if you use my code. All right, guys. So um, let's take a look back mine up here from tonight before we get into this slate. So um, right now, it's going to be close for whether or not I get into the cash. Um, close on the cash line here. And uh, what I'm pretty tilted about is I was debating back and forth between Patty Mills and Kevin Porter Jr., who I had as a core play last slate in the same exact spot. And I was like, you know what? I like Kevin Porter Jr. again here. I went to Patty Mills. I'm sure you saw what happened in that game. I checked my phone. It's like 30 to 2 with like four minutes ago in the first quarter. I'm just like, well, I'm going on to the late slate. Uh, so yeah, Patty Mills obviously didn't do anything because the Nets in general, they couldn't score. But uh, yeah, if I wanted to come for a junior, I would be cashing easily and probably have a chance of the big money. Um, and again, DFS can be so tilting at times, right? I, I go to Kevin Porter Jr. as a core option last night. He was fine. He was fine. But of course, he erupts the next game in literally the same exact matchup. Nothing changed, right? So it's like, ugh. Uh, but what I was hammering home on Patreon was Pacers value, Blazers value, and gets one or two stars. Um, and that's looking to go we're looking to go pretty well, right? Lance Stevenson was an absolute smash. Duarte smashed at low ownership. Goga got in foul trouble, still smashed. Giannis looking like he might get pulled here because it's random blowout. He is still smashing, but he's going to lose a full quarter, looks like, because the Lakers just can't keep it competitive when it's a four-point spread. Um, and then I went to Simons, Nurkic, and Ben McElmore there for value uh, for the Blazers. Um, so that was it for the look back from my main slate. Right now, it's gonna be like money line for, for GBPs. This is my late site lineup. I have to tilt this. I go to a lower on Mo Harkless. He gets injured. Still gonna cash pretty easily in this tournament. Um, because I had a low on Deer and Fox was 50 and a low on Damian Jones, but I swear every time there's an injury, it's just yep, they're in my lineup. But um, yeah, guys, that's it for my uh, my look back. This is the winning lineup right now in the Rainmaker three thousand dollar entry. So Luca was pretty popular. Lance Stevenson was very popular. Macklemore, Winslow was extremely popular. Goga, Fox, Giannis, and Damian Jones. Okay, so let's start. Let's talk about this six game slate. And we'll start with the San Antonio Spurs side. So not really the best matchup here for the Spurs. We do have Lonnie Walker, Trey Jones status up in the air. We'll start with John Tamari at 10-6. So I think it's a fine contrarian play. Um, again, he's had a phenomenal year. I don't like the matchup against Cleveland. Cleveland plays slow and they're solid defensively, but he can still get it done in basically any matchup. So I think he's still viable of a more of a tournament play. Jakob Pertl probably sees, you know, low 30s minutes. Again, not a good matchup. He has been playing really well of late. Three of the last four games, 40-plus fancy points, but he's also priced at a premium. And like I said, I'm not a big fan of this matchup. Uh, Calvin Johnson feels a little bit too pricey for me at 6.2K. I know I had a big game last game, uh, but again, don't love the spot here. I think I'd rather go to a guy like Derek White at 6 1, um, but they're both kind of secondary options. As far as the value goes, I mean, even if those two question players miss, there's nothing that really stands out. McDermott's score independent. Devin Vassell probably sees around 25 minutes. Again, he kind of upside, but he has to hit shots to get value. We finally saw Zach Collins play, and he played really well in 13 minutes, went for 26 fancy points. Um, 
But actually, I didn't look at that. Was that uh, I should have looked at this before? Did he? Um, did he only play in the blowout? Did he play in that in the game when it was competitive? Let me uh, let me actually bring that up because that is important. I should have looked that up before. Um, completely forgot about Zach Collins actually. So let me look. Did he? Um, here I can see. Okay, so he did check in early. So okay, it wasn't just in a blowout. So yeah, Zach Collins at um. At 3-5, again, they kind of took it easy on his mental only played 13 minutes. So unless we hear, like, confirmation that there's that he's, like, off a limit, then he's just a tournament dart throw. Um, and that's probably it for the Spurs. Move on to the Cavs. So keep an eye on a couple pieces of news. They have Levert already listed as out, but um, I don't know if he's been confirmed out yet. And then Darius Garland is questionable. If Darius Garland plays, I think Garland looks a little bit too cheap at 8.4K. We'll start a point probably by mid thirties minutes, assuming that Levert doesn't play. Now, if they both play, and then it's gonna be a little bit interesting to see how the usage is is gonna be distributed between those two. Like who's gonna kind of dominate? Um, and we'll see if even Levert starts. Maybe they'll bring him as the sixth man off the bench. So yeah, a lot of question marks there for Cleveland. But let's just say both the guards are out. Well, that's gonna be tough because we saw Brandon Goodwin was massive chalk last night, and he barely played. He started only played sixteen minutes. They went to Rondo off the bench, who had a really, really good game. Now, I don't think we get 32 minutes again from Rondo, so that's a tough one. I would assume that if both guards are out and Goodwin starts, um, I would think uh, you know Goodwin goes back to around 30 minutes and Rondo to you know 15 to 20. But um, that would kind of come down to ownership for me uh, if both those guys are out. As far as the bigs go, Jared Allen has played really well over the last couple of games. He's been playing you know low 30s minutes uh, again. Matchups not bad. Uh, but I don't know if he continues to play this well. Kevin Love, he's still getting consistent minutes off the bench. He's been averaging, you know, around 30 minutes. And we know he's a really good point for a minute guy. So I like Love a good amount, right? As long as he gets close to 30 minutes, I think he can definitely pay off his salary. And Evan Mobley now sub 7K. Again, he's been playing 30 to 35 minutes. Uh, again, a kind of just a neutral play for me. Um, as far as the rest goes here, so it's like I just don't know what's happening with the rotation, right? Chadi Osmond, like three games ago, he started at uh, point guard. That was four games ago. Um, and then two games ago, he only played 15 minutes and then he moved to the bench. I'm like, okay, like Chetty's, you know, not going to play much. Well, last game he comes on the bench and he plays 31 minutes and plays really well. So it's like, I think they're going to go with a hot hand with some of these secondary plays. So like you can consider Chetty for tournaments, but I have no confidence in his minutes. I got a Coro's a low usage guy that probably plays around 30 minutes. I don't think it's necessary to go there. Um, so yeah, that's it for Cleveland, Chicago and Charlotte. So this game looks pretty appealing, right? We have two teams that run tight rotations and two teams that play literally no defense. So I'll start with Chicago side. No Lonzo, no Io, no Caruso. The big three all look pretty good. I don't know if there's one that stands out more than the other. I think, you know, DeRozan's probably been their most consistent player. Vooch has been a little bit up and down, but again, this is a phenomenal matchup. And Levine, his first game back, came out and played 37 minutes. I guess he only missed a couple games or one game. Um, but yeah, so I think all three of the main Bulls guys are firmly in play. Now, I would assume they start Kobe White at the point, and he probably plays over 30 minutes. So if that's the case, I think he's a pretty safe play in the mid-range. And then Javante Green probably starts and plays over 30 minutes. I think he's a fair value play. I got to kind of do everything for the roster. <clears throat> as far as uh, the rest of the Bulls go, uh, Bradley will play the backup center. I don't think we have to go there. I think we probably see, you know, 20 to 25 minutes from Troy Brown. I think he's a fine contrarian GBP play. And then you probably see a little bit of run for like Matt Thomas, but... Don't think it's necessary to go there. And on the Charlotte side, so we know Gordon Hayward's out for a while. That was so tilting the last uh, slate. Um, I almost cash in tournaments even with an injured Gordon Hayward. But uh, again, the injury bug, I just, I can't avoid it this last month. Uh, I went on a stretch a couple weeks ago where I hit about, for like, for a two-week stretch, it was like 80% of the slates I had either an injury or ejection. And it's just... Again, I'm, I'm had like no injuries for a couple slates, did really well, and right back to the injury bug here with last slate and then the late slate tonight with Mo Harkless. Um, so I'm really hoping I do not get any bad luck with with uh, injuries on this slate. But yeah, we basically sh saw Charlotte run a seven man rotation last game with Hayward out. Now, I don't know if they run that here. Maybe they. I would guess Ish Smith gets a little bit more run this game. But I think the main um, six guys look really, really good. So Lamella Ball last game. He played 44 minutes. Um, we know Lamella's a good point per minute guy. This is, sorry, this is a much better matchup. So I think Lamella looks really good. I have interest in Miles Bridges, who probably plays around 40 minutes. 
Terry Rozier feels a little bit underpriced at 6'9 for a guy that's probably going to get around 40 minutes as long as the game stays competitive. We saw Ubre play close to 40 minutes. I think he looks really good in the mid-range. Mason Plumley gets a big Chicago front court. He could see around 30 minutes. I think he's a fair play in the mid-range. P.J. Washington, assuming no foul trouble, he probably plays over 30 minutes. So basically the main six guys here for the Hornets look really, really good. And then again, we saw Ish Smith play a little bit last game, eight minutes. Um, I would guess he plays a little bit more here, but um, yeah, I think he's just more of a dart throw for me. So yeah, this, this game looks definitely appealing. And the Toronto side, well, they're very similar to Chicago and Charlotte. They run like a six-man rotation. So Siakam, Van Fleet, I once again like. The only real risk here is potential for a blowout. But Siakam's playing like 44 minutes a night. It's absolutely insane. And Van Fleet's playing around 40 minutes. So both those guys look good to me. OG and Scotty Barnes do have upside. But more often than not, they're hovering that 30 to 35 fancy point range. The more secondary plays. Gary Trent Jr.'s price is, is coming up. Again, the minutes are there for him. But like I said, he is scoring dependent. So, like, if he does not hit his shots, the floor is low. Boucher probably gets around 20 minutes. He's a fine tournament play. Achua, 3-5, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. Again, more of a secondary value. And that's really it. Toronto just runs a very, very tight rotation. Now, on the Thunder side, for some reason, someone has to explain this to me. They said they're going to limit Giddy to 30 minutes in the next couple of games. He's 19 years old. Like, what are you doing? What do you mean limit him to 30 minutes? I mean, does that make any sense to anyone? If he's like injured or something, then I totally get it. But no, just limit your rookie to... I've never seen anything like that before. Um, so yeah, 30 minutes of Giddy at 7.6 feels a little bit too pricey. Um, unless they just completely troll and get... Which... You know, knowing this year, Giddy's going to play like 40 minutes tomorrow because coaches, you just cannot trust him at all. Um, Lou Dort, well, I guess if they're going to kind of take it easy on Giddy's minutes, he's going to look better. He's played really well uh, in the last, you know, week, week and a half. He has stepped it up a lot offensively, and he's getting a ton of shot attempts up. So I have no problem going to Dort there. Baisley's also playing huge minutes for this team. He's playing like 35 plus. I think he's a pretty fair play in the mid range. Uh, Trey Mann's playing huge minutes. He's score independent, but like, He's probably going to get, you know, 15 ish shot attempts up. Kenneth Williams, we saw his minutes go way up last game. That's because Pokashevsky got sent back to the G League. He played 31 minutes. And we know Penrich is right, a do it all guy. Now, the, the downside here is that Pokashevsky, they recalled him from the G League. So I think that makes Kenneth Williams more up in the air because the last time that Pokashevsky played, Williams only played 17 minutes. So that's my concern with Kenrich. Jerome, 4K, you know, went back to the bench. So I'm probably not going to go there. Um, and they actually started Derek Favors last game. So keep on starting eye up. He played 26 minutes where Diakite only played um, 14. Now, if Diakite starts, I like him uh, better than Favors. So keep an eye on who starts the five there for the Thunder. Minnesota and Sacramento. So like the matchup a lot here for uh, both sides, really. I think the big three in Cat, Edwards, and D'Lo all in play. I think the guy that looks the best uh, for his salary is probably DeAndre Russell, only 7K. But yeah, all three I have interest in in a great matchup. Vanderbilt at 5-3, most likely sees 25 to 30 minutes. I think he's a decent option that does have upside. I think Patrick Beverly is very safe. We should see around 30 minutes from him. Again, love the spot. Don't know if it gets anyone else here in Minnesota. I mean, Torian Prince, I don't know what has got into him over the last week. He is just, I guess he's LeBron James. I don't know. I don't know what, what, what's gotten into Torian Prince, but I don't necessarily trust the production. Um, and yeah, you can always take a shot in like Beasley in tournaments. He's scoring independent, but... Um, he's a guy that, you know, uh, can get hot and, and does have upside if he has a good shooting night. Now, moving on to Sacramento, I think this team looks very appealing. Again, I had a low Owen Harkless in the late slate get injured, so I don't expect Harkless to play in this game. We know Buddy Heel and Halbert are traded away, so I don't know how you, uh, how you dislike the Kings here. I absolutely love the Kings on the slate. De'Aaron Fox is 7-7. He just first came back. He just, there's no limit on him. So I think Fox looks really good. No Halliburton missing like half the roster in a great matchup. Fox looks good. Harrison Barnes, he's probably going to play 35 plus minutes. I think he looks solid in the mid range. Davion Mitchell's going to start and play mid 30s minutes. I think he's a fair play. Um, you know, Met too, I would assume he picks up a start for Harkless. I think he's going to look at one of the better values in the slate. And then Rashawn Holmes is out tonight, too. He's a late scratch to personal reasons. Keep eyeing this. But if he can't go, I think Damian Jones didn't become a good value. He started. 
And then Lens even become viable as the backup center. Um, so both of those centers are going to be in play. Would prefer Jones, assuming he starts. And then uh, we saw them dust off Lewis King and Woodard uh, in this game tonight, but I don't know if I get to those guys. I think it's really the main Kings I'm focusing on and a lot to like here for Sacramento. Golden State and Utah. So we know Clay Thompson's out. Um, Otto Porter's status is up in the air, even though it doesn't have a Q tag. They said they don't know if they're going to rest him on this half or the second half of the back to back. And then come on, Looney's questionable, which is really interesting because he has not missed a game yet this year. But we'll start with Steph Curry. And again, I'm a broken record. He's a little bit overpriced. Always can go there in tournaments. He does have upside. He's going to hurt you more often than he comes through for you. How many times have I said that? It's the same exact thing I say every time about Steph Curry because his price, he's always just a little bit overpriced. Like, to be honest, Steph Curry should be like a 9 to 9.5K player. But DraftKings continues to list him like 10.5 to 11K. So, again, he's going to fail more often than he comes through. Wiggins is 6'3". Doesn't really stand out. All-star Andrew Wiggins. Again, don't get me started on that. But um, he's kind of more of a secondary play now. With Clay Thompson out, Jordan Poole most likely starts. At 5.8K, I think he makes for a pretty decent play in the mid-range. He's played well off the bench. He's also been doing some, some ball handling, too. Like he almost had a triple-double last game against the Thunder. So I have some interest in Poole, assuming he starts. Porter, in his first game back, only played 15 minutes, which is a little bit concerning. There was no foul trouble. Um, so that was not great to see. Um, keep an eye on this news, right? That hasn't decided if he's going to play the front end or the back-to-back. And see if there's any limitations, because 15 minutes, that's we definitely expected more from Otto Porter minutes-wise. Now, if Kavon Looney misses, they don't have many centers, right? Draymond's out, Wiseman's out, Bielitz is out. So I'm thinking they either start Kaminga at the five or JTA at the five, right? They don't have anyone else. So if if Kavon Looney's out, I'm high in both these bigs, Kaminga and JTA. Um, probably would prefer whoever starts. And both are actually not bad point for minute guys. So yeah, keep an eye on that news. That's gonna be pretty important. Now um if looney plays and like Otto's out i still think there's there's a possibility that we could get like 20 to 25 minutes from kaminga all i will say though is kaminga's minutes are not secure um unless unless looney's if looney's out i feel pretty good about his minutes if looney's in as i'm sure you know you can't trust steve kerr we've seen games where kaminga has started and literally played like five minutes so um if looney's in there's still gonna be some risk with his minutes I don't know if I get to anyone else in this roster for value. I mean, sure, you can take a shot in like a Damian Lee or maybe a Moses Moody gets a little bit more run, but that is probably it for the Warriors on the Jazz side. So, yeah, 8.6K for Donovan Mitchell. Feels still a little bit underpriced. I feel like he should be like a 9 to 9.2K player, somewhere in that range. So still a little bit underpriced, I think. He played 36 minutes in his last game, so there's no limitations on him. And again, Golden State, even though they're good defensively, they play fast. So I think Mitchell makes her a pretty solid play here. The mid-range and Conley, Bogdanovich, Clarkson, all kind of secondary plays. Now, they've been starting as a Buki. Whiteside's been coming off the bench. Um, assuming they continue to start as a Buki, I think he's a pretty good value play. Like 22, 24, 28 minutes last game. If he starts again, I have no issue going to as a Buki. He's a good rebounder. Um, Whiteside, if he comes off the bench, nothing more than a tournament play. Now, if they start Whiteside, then I feel better about that. But last couple games, we start, we, we've seen them start as a Buki. Um, Rudy Gay questionable. Um, he's missed the last couple games. If he misses, you know, we probably get a couple extra minutes for a guy like Royce O'Neal, who's a low usage guy, but again, he's gonna play big minutes. Um, Trent Force at 3-4. We saw about 20 minutes from him. Guess you can go to him in a tournament. Like, uh, where is Pascal? Uh, played a little bit last game, played 17 minutes, so there's no gay. Yeah, you can consider him as a dart throw, but um, that, yeah, that's it again. The mid-range has a Conley, but Donovan's collection. They're fine options, but none of them stand out. And finally, the Lakers and the Blazers. Another game that looks pretty appealing. So um, I'm guessing this game will stay competitive. Uh, well, eh, maybe the Lakers blow them out. I don't know. But um, yeah, Lakers, big three. Uh, don't have a ton of interest in Westbrook 9-2, but I think LeBron and AD in a great matchup here. Both look good. Um, for the price points, I might lean AD over LeBron, actually, but I don't think you can go wrong with either of those two. Malik Monk at 6K, kind of a neutral play in the mid-range. He's a guy that has shown he can still get it done playing alongside the big three. Value on the Lakers? Mm, mm, I don't know if I can stomach anyone, any of them. Like THT, Ariza, Stanley Johnson, Rees. These are all guys that be in the rotation, but hard to get to any of those guys with the big three. Now, one thing I do want to mention is last uh, the Blazers and Lakers played well, it was a week, week and a half ago, and Nurkic just like dominated AD in the post. Like He was just bodying him to the point where they had to bring Dwight Howard out and play him. 
um, and play him like 11 minutes. Now, Dwight Howard missed the game today. If he misses the game tomorrow, they don't have any other big. So, like, do they dust off DeAndre Jordan? Maybe and play him like 10 to 15 minutes. Again, I don't think we have to go there, but I just thought I'd mention that for matchup purposes last time, last game that happened. And finally, the Blazers, another team I think looks very, very good. So no Dame, no Nance. He's traded away. Little's out for the season. Siege McCollum's traded away. Bledsoe's out. N- uh, Snell is, is uh, traded away. Um, Cody Zeller's out. Keon Johnson's out. So basically, it looks like everyone that missed the game tonight is going to miss again. So it's going to be a nine available player. So that means Nurkic and Simons are both going to look really good here in an up-tempo game. These two are going to dominate the usage. I think both look great. We saw Justice Winslow start. Um, you know, the game's still finishing up right now, but I'm thinking he's probably played around 30 minutes. I think he's going to make for a pretty good value. CJ Alibi had a good game tonight. He probably sees around 30 minutes. Ben McMore started. I would assume he pushes for 30 minutes. So those, uh, the starting five looks really good. DSJ coming out the bench, more of a contrarian play. And then the two bigs and Greg Brown and Watford both have, I just mentioned for tournaments. We actually saw Greg Brown have a really, really good, um, first half. Both these guys are good point for minute guys. So they're both playable options. Probably don't get to guy like Belvins. Um, but yeah, everyone else in the Blazers is firmly, firmly in play. So that's going to do it for the video today, guys. Again, if you haven't enjoyed the content, if you haven't enjoyed the content, sorry, I can't talk, uh, hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And again, check out the live stream tomorrow. Uh, I'll be covering a lot of different topics from, from DraftKings to prize picks to NBA top shots. So check that out, guys. But thanks again. Have a great night, and I will see you all in the next video.